Hello out there, and today I'm going to be doing an overview of the Spyderco Perrin PPT-CF. And this is a sprint run for 2018 that basically takes the discontinued PPT model and upgrades it with carbon fiber handle scales and S90V blade steel. Now the original, which is right here, had S30V blade steel and G10 handle scales. And this one was sent to me by my buddy, the Lawn Ranger. He was kind enough to do that just to, uh, to get this knife in my hands and let me test it out. And coincidentally, he did that at about the same time that the sprint run was released. And so that gave me the great opportunity over the last couple weeks to have both of these knives in my possession at the same time. So I could really look them over and see like what differences there were, you know, what qualities one might have over the other and see if it really was just a material upgrade that was the only difference between these two knives. And to be honest with you guys, that really is it. You know, apart from the scales and the steel and the weight difference of about 0.2 ounces that comes with carbon fiber versus um, the G10, the only real difference that I've noticed is the fact that the jimping on the Sprint Run version is a little bit better. So if you're watching this video and have an interest in the design or the model more so than the specific sprint run, then anything that I'm saying about the sprint run can probably be applied to that original model as well. Now that said, my guess is probably that most people watching this video are trying to get the answer to the question, is this knife going to be worth the excessive price tag that's attached to it? That is the big question here, guys, because it's a wonderful knife. It's a great knife. I'm not going to be able to say that enough. I really, really, really like this knife a lot. But for $235, which is what I paid, and honestly, I've seen it at $245 and $250 in a number of places, it is a very expensive knife. It is, I want to say, either the second or third most expensive knife I've ever bought. And so, you know, for me to do that, I had to, I had to make some moves and I had some, some reasoning behind it. And when we talk about value near the end of the video, um, I'll definitely bring up why I decided to, uh, to pull the trigger on this knife and, and why I thought it would be a good decision. But, um, over the course of the video, as I'm hitting on some of the details, I'll try to, I'll try to remember to get to all of the little things that we look for when we're thinking about value so that, you know, you can see if this knife might be worth it for you because it is going to be a, a, a tough one, I think, for a lot of people to, to really grasp uh, how it is worth that much money. And you'll have to decide for yourself. So let's just get into it. Let's get into what the model is all about. So PPT, if you're not familiar with it, and honestly, I really wasn't, uh, the PPT stands for the last initials of the three people who designed it. They were all French. I am not going to do them a disservice by butchering their names and trying to pronounce them. So I have the little paper here where you can see the information about them and the other things about the model. Very cool that Spyderco does this. You know, they're still one of the only companies that, that puts information about their knives, not just in sprint runs or, or even new models. I mean, it's just in almost all their knives, they have a little bit of information, which is very cool. But... Getting back to uh, the knife itself, so what we have is the S90V blade steel and a cutting edge of right around 2.75 inches. Bring in a ruler real quick to, uh, to measure that. Right around 2.75 inches of cutting edge, almost 3 inches of blade length overall, but we have what is, I don't know, sort of unique, and I'll get to that like choil kind of thing right there when we get to um, the ergonomics. But getting back to the blade, it is a, uh, a flat grind very attractive flat grind. The blade itself is just an excellent EDC utility kind of blade in that it has a, a very nice tip and it also not quite a worn cliff but not too much belly so I mean it's going to be just really great for utility tasks and and generally easy to sharpen but it does not have a sharpening choil. So I know a lot of people who are spending a lot of money on knives are looking for that kind of thing when it comes to value. So uh, definitely something to be aware of. And with with how hard S90V is as a steel, that might be um, might be a big turnoff right off the bat for some people. So again, something to be aware of there. Now, as we uh, as we move back, you can see the jimping on the knife is separated. And at first I couldn't figure out why, but then, you know, the more you look at the knife, the more you realize that had they not, you know, separated the jimping here, you would have just a very, very thin piece of metal above the spider hole. And so I think they really just did that for integrity. And, you know, had this knife been designed differently or had the blade been just a little bit like taller, they would have been able to, to have it um, without that gap. Now that said, the jimping here is, is very useful, very good and grippy. 
Um, the forward part, at least, is excellent. Um, back here, though, you know, you do have this little gap, uh, excuse me, you do have this little patch right here that's very good, but you can see the jimping is actually recessed, you know, beneath the frame, so you don't get the full use of it, um, you know, further back. So a little bit disappointing there, not really what you would expect. But then as we move further back, just taking a glance at the knife, uh, we do have a somewhat open frame in that the backspacer doesn't go all the way down the entire knife, so you could get in there and clean it pretty easily. And our locking mechanism is a very interesting one. And it is a, a great one that, that helps with the debate of frame lock or liner lock. Because this has qualities of both. For me, I I really, I don't know, I sort of see this with the strength of a frame lock, but you know the, the liners aren't an overlay. They are screwed in, so I guess technically this is co considered a liner lock. So, sort of interesting there. And then as we go back, you can see the hardware is T8 all the way across the board, which is very good. And it came with this lanyard. So, not very many knives do. Um, I haven't taken it off. I don't think I will take it off because I think it's sort of cool. Just uh, that this happens so rarely that I'm not going to mess with it. But yeah, it does come with that lanyard. We do have a pocket clip. It is a one position tip up only pocket clip, extremely deep carry. Really like the pocket clip on this one. It's very cool. And now let's talk about the scales. The scales are something very different and it's something that I thought I was looking at an optical illusion when I first picked up the knife. And the reason for that, is just look at it from above. And if I put my thumb over the backspacer, you'll be able to see it a whole lot easier. Look at the thickness. It's not the same. This knife is not the same in thickness uh, from one side to the other, which is really, really odd. And it makes it even more difficult to measure that because of the way that the, um, the carbon fiber scales are milled. And it's exactly the same way with the G10. You know, if you look at the, the milling, actually, the milling on the two sets of scales is in exactly the same place. So everything about these scales is identical except for the material used. So it's not just something with the sprint run. When you when you look at this, you know, let me see how close I can get it. When you look at this, you can see that on the um, the show side, I guess is what we're calling it. We'll just call it the show side, but whatever. Uh, here, the the steel frame is a little bit thinner, and it seems like the carbon fiber is a little bit thicker. And then on the other side we have the really, really thick frame and a little bit thinner carbon fiber. And that thin carbon fiber like tapers out and evens out as we get further down uh, the knife. But yeah, I mean, it took me a lot of time and a, lo a lot of messing with and, and measuring and, you know, cause I thought, I thought that maybe just the color difference was what was making me think that the knife wasn't symmetrical. But at the end of the day, it is a little bit thicker on this side here, the lock side, overall, than on the other side. Just is. Now, I don't think that that has really any noticeable impact in use, like when you're cutting. What it does do though, and I think the reasoning behind it, is that it gives you this really, really strong, like strong lockup with the frame. I mean, I think that is the intention and the thought process behind it. I don't know that much about it. I'm sure that this has been discussed in the past with people who have had the PPT, the original one. So there is an answer to this question like like somewhere else and I will eventually investigate it. Probably someone knows who's watching. So if you want to comment down below and let me know, that'd be great. <laughs> but yeah, it's just something that I actually sort of like. I think it's cool because it's something that uh, adds to the usability of the knife. I, it's 100% intentional, and I think it's meant just to create more rigidity and structure. So, very cool. Now, what I will say about this knife is that I couldn't find anywhere um, what the material for the frame was. And so that's why I'm assuming that it's stainless steel. I think that if it were titanium, one, the knife would be a lot lighter, but two, um, they'd talk about it. They would say that it was a, it was a titanium frame lock. We'd probably have an interface too. So my guess, even though I can't be 100% sure because I haven't taken the knife apart, is that this is going to be stainless steel. And it's exactly the same on the original one as well. So no upgrade there. There is a little bit of milling, as you can see inside, to cut a little bit of weight. So that is cool. Closing the knife, you can see the uh, the centering is very good. 
The knife closed has an interesting look, and for people who like to flick their knives open, um, it might be a little bit concerning because if you do the spider flick, that's the size hole that you have to work with. But, and I know I'm gonna fail on camera, but we're gonna try anyway. Yep, there we go. <laughs> you can still spider flick it just fine. So you can spider flick it right-handed, left-handed. Uh, that is not an issue whatsoever. Obviously easier to just regular flick, but the opening action on this knife is very, very good. Very good. And um, there's no play up and down, left or right, so very secure lockup. Uh, closing it, it doesn't drop shut. You know, it, it's not particularly smooth uh, closing. I don't think there's anything that I can do to get it to, uh, to drop shut. It's not that kind of knife. It's not gonna be. We're running on bronze washers, so it's just fine and usable. But again, uh, for people that are looking for like that bearing quality, like drop shuttiness, not there, not gonna happen. All right, now let's get into ergonomics. The ergonomics of this knife were one of the big things that, that people red flagged me about before I picked it up. They said that this was gonna be an issue. They said that it wasn't very good in hand. For my hands, it's been great. Now, I will say that just the feel of the carbon fiber is a little bit grippier and uh, is more comfortable in hand than the G10. So if you have the original and you're not too satisfied with the way that it feels in hand, there is an upgrade to the way the scales feel on the carbon fiber. So there is that. But when it comes to just the, the general like grip configuration that you can get, I'm very happy with this knife. You know, it's not quite a forward choil here, but it's an area, you know, that you have this area where you can just sort of finagle your fingers in wherever you want them to be. You know, so you could choke all the way up and then second finger rest back here. And for me, that is very comfortable. And then you could choke back and that is very comfortable. And then you could sort of go in between if you needed to. So yeah, for me, I think it's excellent. If you have monster hands, I mean, you have the lanyard for, for further support, but even with like really big hands, you know, even if you have big hands, you, you know, I have a little bit of extra real estate, you'll probably be just fine. So ergonomically, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. And let's focus and, and get in here closer a little bit on the carbon fiber. So the carbon fiber, I did a video on, on the carbon fiber for the Sprint Run um, Para 3 because it was that peel ply and I'd never had Spyderco's like full carbon fiber scale before. And this is very different from the other carbon fiber. So that answers that question that I had in the, uh, the previous video. But the carbon fiber here is really, really good as well. You know, it's, uh, it's not slick whatsoever. It has that really nice matte finish and the ridges on all of these that are carved out um, they're not sharp at all, but they do provide good amount of grip. So I'm happy with that. Happy with the pocket clip and the way that it rides in the pocket. So across the board, you know, there are some, some things that I think for EDC, this is an excellent, excellent knife. This is a knife that I want to use. I don't want this to be a safe queen. I want this to be a knife that I use. And so that comes and brings us to value. When it comes to value, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how to say that this is a $235 knife. I can't wrap my head around that. The main reason for me saying that though is that S90V, that steel doesn't do anything for me. It's not like, it's not this big attractive steel for me. And uh, for this knife being like a knife that I think should be a user, S30V would have been just fine. You know, I didn't need an upgraded steel for it. So I don't know that paying for the upgraded steel is something that, uh, is really that important to me. You know, this knife right here with S30V and G10, even though I do prefer the um, the carbon fiber over the G10, I think that this one is just an excellent knife in its own right and at a much better price. Now, the discontinued PPTs were going up in, in value and I'd seen them for, you know, close to, you know, close to $200 at, at some point. But the fact of the matter is with this one coming out, I think that the uh, the original one might drop in value and might be easier to get cheaper for a while. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. The other thing is I think with sprint runs and sprint runs like this is that I'll be able to sell this one if I need to. And so I made the investment of 235 bucks. I'll be able to get probably 200 back for it, maybe 190, 180. So I just take that little bit of a risk to try to, you know, try to get my hands on it. And if I don't keep it, then, you know, then I move on from it. 
So that's really where I see value being. And if you want this to be a save queen, you can definitely do that. If you want this to be a user, you could, but it's a pretty darn expensive user. And there's other ones out there that are cheaper, including the original PPT guys. So any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know below. But that is my take on it. Thank you for watching and take care. I'll talk with you soon. Have a good one.